Blood contains three major cell types. The first is red blood cells, also called erythrocytes. These red blood cells are responsible for carrying oxygen throughout the body. There's also platelets, also called thrombocytes, which help with blood clot formation. The third type is white blood cells. White blood cells are also called leukocytes, and there's five distinct types. These different types of leukocytes can be divided into two subclasses, labeled granulocytes and agranulocytes, based on whether they have granules, like these three, in the cell, or if they don't contain granules, like these two. So with our leukocytes, there's a mnemonic to remember which ones are granulocytes and which are agranulocytes. We remember, granny fill is a site because all of the granulocytes, granny, end in fill, and all of the agranulocytes end in site. So granny fill is a site, can help you remember which leukocytes have granules and which do not. Now, for their specific functions, neutrophils are really good at eating up pathogens. You can kind of remember like a little Pac-Man. He goes and will eat up, he's a first responder, and will eat up any pathogens or anything that doesn't belong. Next are basophils. With basophils, these release histamine and heparin, which are released when you have allergies. So next time you're sneezing from your allergies, you can remember your basophils are trying to help you out. There, next are the eosinophils. Eosinophils are really good at helping destroy parasites. So if you had a little worm here, an eosinophil would come and dump toxins onto the parasite and kill it. Kill your little parasite. With the agranulocytes, the first one is the lymphocyte. Now lymphocytes, there's B and there's T cells. These work together to help with both your hum humoral immunity and your cell-mediated immune responses. And then there's the monocyte. Monocytes can become macrophages when they exit the bloodstream. We're going to use the monocyte to learn two more concepts. So if we have a monocyte floating through the bloodstream, this will be our monocyte and then this is a, a blood vessel. The monocyte can exit the blood vessel through a process called diapedesis. Now if you, so diapedesis, it has this word ped in there, like pedestrian. So I think of this monocyte just kind of walking through that blood vessel and out into the surrounding tissues. Now, if we had some tissue damage over here, maybe you were cut or, and some pathogens broke into the tissues, there's going to be inflammatory markers that will be spread out throughout the tissues from this inflammation. This monocyte will be able to now follow these chemical messages to the site of inflammation so it can find the area where it needs to help clean up any pathogens or debris that entered into the body. This is called chemotaxis. If you break down the word, I remember chemotaxis is following the chemical pathway, so it's like it's taking a chemical taxi to the area of inflammation where it's needed.